The largest pro wrestling events in the country, WrestleCade, returns to Winston-Salem, November 24th to the 26th. Meet your favorite wrestling stars, experience live wrestling events, shop for exclusive wrestling merch and more. Three days of family-friendly fun for fans of all eras during WrestleCade, November 24th to the 26th. Your chance to meet the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. It all goes down at the Benton Convention Center in Winston-Salem. Get your tickets now, WrestleCade.com. Ladies and gentlemen, from the studios in the wrestling capital of the South, it's another terrific episode of The Binge Buster Show. Please welcome your host, Tony Binge. Hello everyone, welcome to The Binge Buster Show, coming to you right here in the studios of the wrestling capital of the South, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I am super excited about tonight's podcast as we are going to be uh, going into a whole different era of pro wrestling. And so without any further ado, I want to bring on my, my guest this week. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, owner of Overdriver, Bill White. Bill, what is going on? Hey, Tony. We are doing good tonight, man. I appreciate you having us on, brother. Yeah, man, uh, I'm I'm excited to have you guys. Uh, I know we've been we've been trying to plan this podcast now for uh, for quite a bit of time, and uh, it just seems like uh, sometimes my schedule, your schedule, uh, it, it conflicted a few times. But hey, we, we we made it work tonight. We made it. We got home. We 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 took it home. It's perfect. Yes, it's going to be great. So, uh, in the old days, let, let's talk about this for a minute. So, in the old days. Yeah of pro wrestling uh there was a uh it, it was it was kind of like uh when you wanted to get booked you uh had to take out your pictures and then you had to get in your car and then you had to drive from town to town looking for shows uh introduce yourself to a promoter only to be told uh well i'm booked up the show's booked up right now but uh, i'll get back to you but uh, I think you have come up with something that's going to take us to a whole different era. Um, uh, but before we get into that, you know, uh, as, as I said, that was the old days. Nowadays, a lot of guys will get on Facebook and uh, social media, and, and, that, and that's a great outlet to get booked. But there again, it's flooded. Um, mo- most promotions yes, are flooded sir. with talent. But you have came up with an idea that is going to help not only wrestlers, promoters, just anybody and everybody that's in pro wrestling. Uh, let's let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely, Tony. You're you're 100 percent right. My old days and and what you have now. And and let's let's go ahead and just say it. You know, there's no outlet that's a a bad outlet per se in trying to get booked. But there's always a, a more efficient means of doing things. You know, and and uh, that's kind of what we're taking a look at doing with Overdriver. So what we're we're doing is building a mobile app that's going to be the home. Uh, for professional wrestling and that'll be for the three primary pillars which is of course your promoters that run shows your talent which can be anything from your professional wrestling superstars to your referees to your managers to even your photographers or podcasters uh, to wrestling fans and connecting them all on a social media platform with a variety of tools that's designed for each of those pillars to synergize the business so we're hoping that uh, when we do launch that that you're right and we can uh, call the next the next phase the the age of overdriver if you will um so that's that's what we're doing with overdriver to get people booked and to get fans connected to shows and to help cut through the noise and put a uh, instead of just a spotlight but a, a laser focused uh laser light on this business yeah and, and you know when, when you first reached out to me about this i was uh, i was very uh excited to hear about it because i'm like you know because somebody like me, I mean, I, I'm old school. Um, I don't really try to get booked uh, all through social media. I mean, I, I will occasionally, but for the most part, the the wrestlers and promoters and uh, you know companies that I work for, um, it's people that I have worked for in the past that know me. Uh, know you know I've been around the business for thirty years now, and so I yes, know sir. a lot of people. So. I don't really have to, uh, well, I, I'm going to say I don't have to. Everybody has to 
do something to reach out to market themselves. Um, but as far as me, like I'm not trying to, to wrestle every weekend, you know, two and three and four and five shows a weekend. Um, I'm just doing a little bit to keep myself busy to give me something to do on the weekends. Um, but but the younger younger guys and the younger talent that are coming up, um, I think Overdriver is going to be uh, wonderful for them because they're going to be able to, uh, you know, get their name out there more. Uh, I I I feel like like it's going to reach more people, and and I know this might might sound crazy, but I think it's going to reach more people than social media because now you're going to have more of a a connection versus you know, going on Facebook or, you know, Instagram or whatever and looking, you know, looking at different wrestlers or promoters, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, the way I like to liken it, I, I kind of identify with being a forward thinking individual and I can see that there's a lot of functions that um, we're bringing with Overdriver that I think are long overdue. Um, and I'm aware of the fact that there are some functions that we won't have in the first version, but that doesn't mean we won't be able to upgrade, right? We have to start somewhere. And if we can get more people involved and more people utilizing the app, um, then that gives us more power to grow the app with even more advanced features. But uh, I think at the end of the day, we're doing something a little different um, in that the app is a kind of a, it's an industry focused social media. Um, and by that fans that follow Tony binge would be able to pick you out, like in the lineup of, of wrestlers that they love and they can tag you on their phone. And then the moment you are booked on a show being that it's not as maybe as frequent as some of the younger guys, you know, they may or may not see your advertisement on the Facebook post, but it will give a push notification to their phone the moment you are booked and an opportunity to buy the ticket right there and then and have it scanned at the door when they get there. So it's going to simplify a lot of advertising for the fans. It's going to really connect a lot of talent to promotions. And, and there's a lot of different ways that, that this, I think, will in the long term benefit. If you take a guy like Drew McIntyre, who is rumored to be uh, leaving the WWE here shortly, he's obviously got a non-compete at the moment, but the moment he does drop on the Indies, his, uh, you know, his book is going to fill up relatively quickly. But if there's one announcement that goes to all 633 wrestling federations in the United States that he's available, he'll have his whole calendar filled through the, through the year within a, a matter of hours. Yeah. And, and not only that, but I, I think a lot of promotions that run shows, you know, re- relatively close together, uh, could be an opportunity there for a, a, a wrestler to get multiple bookings on the same day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you'll be able to control your calendar on the app, so you'll be able to uh, avoid um, avoid any kind of bookings that might conflict, like take a booking in New York and not have the ability to take that second show in South Carolina. You know, you'll be able to kind of make sure you don't make those kind of errors, but you can fill it and organize it and you can even negotiate your fees. Um, and I think what's great about it is, you know, we're, we're going to be free to download and free to set up your profile. And we're going to give you a bunch of tools to use. You use the tools you want. You don't have to pull out all the tools. You don't have to get involved with all of them. You can use what's going to benefit you and leave the rest until maybe you need them later. Right. Oh yeah. That, that, that sounds great. And, 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 and as you were talking about the calendar, it reminded me of my, the old days when I first got into wrestling, um, you know, basically all through the nineties, uh, and back then, you know, cell phones were just really starting to come out uh, during mm-hmm. this time. So at home, uh, and I learned this from Jimmy Valiant, he taught me this, but I kept my my booking sheet or, or my booking calendar um, right by the home phone. So if I was out, if I was on the road or what what have you, and a promoter was to call my house and say, hey, I want to book Tony, then my wife could all – you know, all she had to do is open up my book and look at the calendar and say, "Oh yeah, yeah, he's free." And and as Boogie'd always say, you pencil it in until it's confirmed. But she would pencil in that that booking. Um, but you know, I wouldn't know what my bookings were until I got home and looked at the book, or unless I called and asked her. So with this, all you gotta do is you pull out your phone or your iPad or what have you, and it's right there in front of you. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's the idea at the end of the day is to take the entire wrestling industry from fans to belt makers to ring rental services to the wrestling schools to your biggest stars to your favorite promotions all at the touch of your fingertips right on your cell phone. I love that. That that, that is great. I I really well, think I appreciate it's, that. Yeah, I really think it's going to change uh the face of 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 how everybody in the wrestling business does business, and 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 I I think it can't I mean it, it can only uh, benefit everybody. I mean I think it's I think it's going to be a, a, a great concept. Well, I appreciate that um, for sure, and I think you know probably now would be a good time to mention that um, you know the app is is currently in the coding phase. It means that we're past planning, we're past prototype, and we're we're currently going through the line of codes to make sure that all the functions work, um, so that we can you know launch this for free for everybody on both the Apple stores and the Google stores. We're looking at an eight to ten month window that we're told is going to take them to program. We'll have a better update within next six weeks to have a better um, bead on exactly when it will launch. Um, but we're currently campaigning to get people involved on the program so that when we do launch, we don't want to have the problem that a lot of businesses that have tried to do, you know, like wrestling databases and so forth on on the internet might have like 17 or 25 wrestlers after trying to push it for like five years, that's not going to appeal to people. So we're getting people to sign up ahead of time so that we'll have a deep resource. And as of right now, within about a month's period of time, we have 29 promotions across 12 States representing a, a little over a fifth of the country having a presence there. And we have eight to 10 months to continue filling that roster and making it even deeper um, with great promotions. And another exciting thing is that we're not just talking about startup promotions. We have really well-established companies, including CZW out of New Jersey with DA uh, Hyde. And um, we have Ring of Fire and we have ACCW and um, we just picked up Joe Kazana promotions in Tennessee. We have just a, a variety of, of excellent promotions that want to be there to start of and 120 talents so far that want to be there to start of. Um, and we're spreading the word to get that database even deeper. We anticipate that at this rate, we can have somewhere around 300 promotions at the start and somewhere between a thousand, maybe 1500 talent the day of launch. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I, I know, I, I know when, uh, when you and, uh, Dalton reached out to me, I was like excited. I was like, yes, I'm definitely going to sign up for that. So I can't wait for it to drop. I can't wait to try it out because, you know, like I said earlier, even though I'm not taking a lot of bookings, I'm only working for a few promotions. Um, who knows? With this app, it may it may help me decide to 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 br- out, you know branch out more and take more bookings and uh you know and and finish out my career strong and and get booked somewhere I may have not even got booked at or some promotion I didn't even know about. Um, yeah, you know th- through 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 you know through this app, so I'm excited about it. Well, let's let's give you a perfect example of of part of of kind of what you're mentioning, Dalton, who you you know referred to. We were doing a podcast just the other day, and <clears throat> one of our partners, Jennifer Bracken, runs a promotion uh, right within his neighborhood, and he had no idea that she was running mm-hmm. because the algorithms of Facebook continue to miss him, even though he's geographically there, his interests are there, he's actively trying to be involved in the community, and within you know a 15, 20 minute drive, he's missing a promotion that's running. And, and so people ask us sometimes, like, how's it different than Google? How's it different than Facebook? Like, there's a prime example. If you go on there and you type in your zip code and I want wrestling federations within a 90 mile radius, this will give you the opportunity to have all of the involved or, or the participating federations show up and they don't have to pay anything to be in that database. That's awesome. And, 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 that, and, and, and I, and I happened to be on that podcast and you're watching as you, as that happened. And I was just like scratching my head going, wow. I mean, right there in his backyard and had no clue that they were even there. Exactly. And let's say that your career, you decide that maybe you 
have injuries that nag at you and you decide to move into commentary or refereeing as, as a way to stay in the business, but you have to give your knee a rest for a year or something, you can change on the profile what services you provide, oh, what wow. you charge, and where you're willing to travel. So you can keep your longevity. And if somebody approaches you and says, hey, you know, Tony, I've been watching you for a long time and I have a little bit of money that I want to invest. How about you and I start a promotion together? Well, then you can for free start up your advertising on, you know, your new promotion and just seamlessly slide over to the promoter profile and then track down the talent you want to hire for your promotion and start tagging all the fans that follow you, your career and tell them, Hey, follow my new promotion and get push notifications to the phone. The moment you launch. Wow. That is amazing. Like, like this, this is really cool. Like I I'm, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to use it now. Just, by, just by talking to you, you know, I, I, I am too. I am too. I wish that, you know, and I'm, I'm not the only one that's voiced this. We've had a lot of veterans that say, yeah, I wish this was around 25 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, I spent 11 years in the business and, And, um, you know, I could have, I think, done a lot more had I had something like this available to me. But, you know, alas, technology wasn't, you know, doing this for this business at the time. It seems to me that professional wrestling is loved, but very often overlooked when it comes to new technology. Yes. Yeah, I would definitely. So we're hoping to. Yeah, we're hoping to bridge that. Oh, that that that's awesome! I can't wait. Well, uh, I'm I, I, I now once 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 it launches, is 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 it going to be like on all like on like on all like available through Apple and Google, or is it going to be Google. a whole? Yeah, yeah, we're okay. no, we're doing both. Okay, yeah, we're doing both platforms, so that people will be able to do it. Um, we have Overdriver dot org is our website, so people can go there and kind of keep up with us. They can follow our socials on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, but the primary app is designed for your uh, Droid databases and your Apple databases or um, platforms for the cell phone. Our website shows that uh, 90% of the people that have hit our website do so from their phones. Only, t- uh, only around 20% have actually looked at it through a traditional desktop. Okay. Wow. That, that that's awesome. Yeah, times have changed, you yeah. know, and we're yeah. we're we're aimed to to change with it and that's what we're really trying to do. So, yeah. Well, that that's awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Well, uh let's let, let's talk a bit more. Uh you touched on uh, earlier that you used to be in the business as a wrestler. Uh tell tell me how you got your start. Yeah, sure. I'd be I'd be happy to do so. So, I was um, I was 25 years old when I decided to, to step in the ring. I was a fan of it my whole life, like from, you know, some of my youngest memories of being like five or six years old and uh, watching Hulk Hogan versus the, you know, Ultimate Warrior with my grandmother in Massachusetts. Um, I, but I just did not approach the idea of being a wrestler until I was 25. And then I reached out to Smoky Mountain Championship Wrestling. Uh, which was running a school in Marion. And that's where I met uh, the lost son, Crucifix, who now goes by the Greek Wolverine Crucifix. And he ended up training me and we became best friends and uh, got my start as a wrestling manager for high velocity wrestling in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Um, and did that for about two months before I started legitimately wrestling in the ring and, and practicing my style and learning and making mistakes and learning some more. Um, and I traveled the Southeast for about 11 years, taking my fair share of bumps and scars and concussions and, um, worked with some really great guys. I actually got to wrestle, uh, you know, um, Stephen Walters who later become uh, dash wilder and, I got to work with C.W. Anderson, who was just awesome with me for being so young in my career. He was just uh, great and guided me through. And, uh, of course, Crucifix and Shane Douglas and Jerry Lynn, all guys I got to have an opportunity to to share the ring with. And, and then the pandemic hit and the audience left. And I was going through a, a divorce at the time. And I stepped away from the ring kind of finished that divorce, that ugly period, restarted my life, remarried, found the love of my life, started a family, and we started talking about doing a business. And we were trying to figure out what we were going to invest in. 
And I told Maddie this idea that I had, and it was inspired by originally the idea was that I had worked for several promotions in my time and knew several other wrestlers that would go to a promotion, put in the effort, take the bumps, go to get our payday. And a promoter would say, Hey, look, sorry, but the, the audience, the gate, the draw wasn't what I had hoped. And I'm I'm not going to be able to pay you what I promised. And I thought to myself, this is the only business that I've worked that you can get away with that. Right. Somehow you get away with that and something's got to change. And, and that was what initially kind of drove that start ideas. How, how do you fix things? I'm a problem solver and I can't fix that. But if a wrestler takes uh, a booking from an app and that app, like an Airbnb secures that transaction, that'll reduce the incidents because the transaction will be secured and automated through a internationally recognized security banking platform. Cool. That might help. And then all these other ideas of networking, doing ratings and reviews so that wrestlers can call out promoters that aren't running good and they can elevate the promoters that deserve even more attention from wrestlers and talent. And then the vice versa I know promoters have been burned by wrestlers. We need to give them the same opportunity, but it has to be historic based. They have to book through the app to earn the right to do that. Otherwise we're at risk of a bunch of hearsay. Right. right? And we need something that sticks because if you go online, you go to Facebook and you say, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby at this wrestling federation didn't pay me maybe five to 45, maybe 50 people in your circle hear it. If it hits their algorithm, and then it's lost forever. Did you change the business? Did you help somebody else not get screwed over? No. So we need something that sticks and helps us to identify five-star talent and five-star promotions, as well as to identify promotions that need to kind of step up their game on the the business level or kind of walk away and and stop hurting people. And the same to be said for talent that shows up drunk or stoned out of their mind and they drop somebody on their head, maybe you shouldn't book this guy. Maybe you should book this guy instead. And and we can't do that if we don't have a database that's based on historic use. Right. Yeah. I, I, I like it. I mean, I think it's great, but you know, uh, going back to, to, uh, to, you know, how you got your start and, and that's, that's, that, uh, you know, that's kind of how I did. And you, you mentioned the town Marion. So, you know, on my podcast, I like, mm-hmm. I, like to, I like to tell stories and, and that kind of thing and, and let my guests tell stories. And so I'm going to tell a story about Marion. So this was probably okay. 1994, 95 ish. Um, I was a Marion, uh, working for, uh, this company. And, um, and of course, you know, uh, I've, I've I've always been a heat magnet. I've always known how to draw heat and make the make the crowd mad. Uh, but yeah, that's I have, why you and I get along. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and I have that talent of pissing them off one second and having them cracking up the next. So they're confused on whether they hate me or whether they love me. You know, um, but this particular night they were really hating me. Um, uh, an- another wrestler that you may know and heard of, I'm sure, uh, Dangerous Donnie or Big Donnie. Uh, at the time, mm-hmm. he was that that company's heavyweight champion, and so my tag team partner at the time had a uh, he was challenging for the for the championship, and um, so we were there twice. So the first time we went there, um, I was now when I tell the story, uh, I was young and I was not married, and uh, but uh, I was starting to learn the wrestling business, and. And and I I've, and I probably told the story on other podcasts, but I, but I'm, but you may not have heard it, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna tell it to you to give you a good a, yeah, good, a good chuckle. Um, but uh, uh, but anyway, so uh, he and I are out there doing this first match uh, that he had that that we had with Donnie and someone else in a tag, and um, I noticed there was a couple couple of females on the front row, um, and I started messing with them and you know, and taunting them and, and they were with a couple of guys and I was like, you know, um, I would run a, you know, I'd do something to him and get a little heat. Then I'd go back to, to the girl and I'd yell at her. And, and then the last thing I said, and, and we ended up winning the, winning the, winning the match. And as I'm leaving the ring, I tell the girl that, uh, now that I beat him up, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have her come to my hotel room and I'm gonna make a woman out of her. 
and uh, go into the dressing room. And a few minutes later, uh, one of the wrestlers goes, hey, Tony, uh, there's a girl at the door asking for you. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, there's a girl at the door. And I'm thinking he's ribbing me because I'm thinking he heard the girl say or he heard me say that to the girl. And sure enough, these girls were at the dressing room door going, okay, what are you going to show us? And I'm like, well, what, the what? <laughs> and I'm like, well, isn't that your boyfriend out there? And she's like, uh, well, yeah, but I mean, but I'm, I'm, you know, you, you, you're, you're saying you're going to show us something. So what are you going to show us? And so long story short, Bill, um, I, uh, end up, uh, out with these girls and, uh, I, you know, you hear my voice and, and people think I'm a country guy, which I, I mean, I'm country, but I'm not that country, uh, to where I you know, work on a farm or know anything about cows other than, you know, that's where I get my filet mignon from. But, um, but these girls that night taught me what cow tipping was. We went cow tipping. Um, <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, but this other one, um, one of the girls, uh, so one girl drove and the other girl was with me and. Uh, somehow or another, we ended up in the backseat of the car and, and I got home at like 5 a.m. the next day. <laughs> and that was my first trip to Marion. And then, uh, so that was fun. But my second trip to Marion, not so much. We have our rematch with Donnie and, um, he ends up getting hurt and they have to call the paramedics and they, they, they in turn call the police. Um, and the fans were ready to kill me. So we, I had to get a police escort. Uh, out of the parking lot. So, uh, but but when you told me that, when you when, when you mentioned Marion, it just put that thought in my mind. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. So uh, so that's one of the nights I'm glad Overdriver wasn't around because then they wouldn't be, they weren't able to track me back down. <laughs> yeah, but well, we're not planning to give home addresses. How's that? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not doing that. But I, I tell you, the only time in my heel career that I remember uh, having to get escorted out of the building was, believe it or not, <laughs> at a Christian wrestling show. Oh, wow. That was, it was a show for the ministry, and, and that was the one show where somebody got so mad at me for you know disrespecting and, and harassing the crowd. And not that I used any profanity. I, I didn't use any kind of religious suggestions or just regular heel heat, you know, yelling at the fans while stomping on their hero's leg. You know, right, that kind of yeah. stuff. Nothing out of the ordinary. And and they come to me in the back and they're like, man, you, we got to get you out of here because somebody's threatened to pull a knife on you. And I'm like, really? This is, this is the one show I should be safe. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the one where you least expect someone to have a knife ready to kill you. <laughs> but, but sometimes <laughs> yeah, those, those church shows can end up like that. I mean, I've, I've worked a few of those myself, so I can attest. I know one night I didn't even see it, but I had turned heel on, on Jimmy Valiant, and, um, and I wasn't even paying attention. And the referee comes over, and he goes, get back in the ring, because I, I had, you know, turned on Boogie, and then – some other baby faces had came out and uh, was checking on him. And the referee comes over to me and says, get back in the ring. And I'm like, I can get back in the ring. There's four baby faces. He says, get back in the ring right now. So I jump up, I jump up on the apron and right as I do security tackles this guy. And, uh, he had a knife was coming out after me with a knife. <laughs> so, because yeah. I had turned on Boogie, but if that referee hadn't have told me get back in the ring, the dude probably would have stabbed me. You know, in the back. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see him coming. Yeah, which is is just like a cowardly thing to do, and and all the more reason, like you know, just in my perspective, man, Tony, you you ought to get paid for your job because it's not like what you do isn't dangerous, right? What we do in the wrestling ring is is dangerous, if, especially if you're a heel, right? Right. Yeah. Or or a spot. Uh, a spot, um, let's say a spot oriented professional wrestler that, that, uh, has no respect for physics. They also have, have a very dangerous job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's the, the wrestling business is a, is a crazy sport. It's like one of those sports, like you said, uh, where sometimes you can, uh, get promised one thing and get told another. And, uh, you, you, um, you know, you, you, you know, you, you, you put your, you put your trust in wrestlers, promoters, whatever. And, uh, you know, and, you know, I, I've learned in this business, uh, 
doing it for 30 years that, um, you know, nothing's, uh, nothing's in stone. Nothing is a guarantee unless you have a contract. And even then those sometimes get a little fuzzy, but, um, but, yeah. but I definitely think overdriver is going to, is going to, you know, help a lot of that out for sure. Yeah. Well, we're, we're looking forward to using ratings and reviews to kind of help uh, identify and, and more than anything, identify the, the rising stars, right? Cause we might help stars rise to the top quicker if we have more long lasting stellar reviews rather than people who go online and, and they jump on Facebook or Instagram and like book this guy and you get 35 people saw it. And only one of them was a promoter. And that was the promoter who already booked them. Does that help them? Right. We need a system that's a little bit more, um, kind of online in stone, if you will. Right. Um, and another feature that I'll tell you about uh, that's one of my favorite features is is you as, as a talent. You probably put the ads out there, right, when you get a show booked, right? Right, yeah. You're doing some promoting, but you don't get paid for it. Now, I'm not saying that every promoter is going to use this, but I believe in shared prosperity. I believe that the promotions, because I've experienced in my commission sales career, that the companies that compensate the best – have the best performance, get the best people, get the best results. And so we've designed it so that Overdriver will allow not only ticket sales that are designed to cost promoters less and cost fans less on the service charges uh, that the current market is offering, but they'll be able to authorize commission sales to anybody that they hire through Overdriver so that when you share those links, if you get a ticket buy, you get a commission off that and they can judge whether they want to do a dollar commission or a $5 commission, depending on how much they want to incentivize their crew to really push the sales. So now you have a sales force advertising your show more aggressively than ever before, because let's face it, if you sell 50 tickets, you might make more than you do when you take the bumps and you oh. get paid both. Wow. Nice. That, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm excited about this, man. I, I I think it's really gonna gonna take off for you, and not only that, but it's gonna help. It's gonna help the wrestling business tremendously, well, and that's why we're doing it. Yeah, because like, if we were doing it for greed, right? If we were doing it because we thought this was the best opportunity to make the most money, we'd be charging uh, a lot of memberships up front. We'd be charging high service fees. We'd try to get every buck we can. This is this is a sport that I love, and, and and I love the people in it, and I want to help them. So we're keeping the service charges lower than the competitors. We're offering the download and the profiles for free. And the only time that you pay anything is if you're um, exchanging money. Then obviously Stripe, which is our our uh, the international um, money exchanger, they offer the security. They always do a service charge. Everybody, anytime that you transfer funds through any app or any online service, there's going to be some kind of a service fee. So we need to make sure that they get paid. And then we try to make a little bit of profit, but we're talking about like a service charge that's maybe a dollar to three dollars, depending on the service. So less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks and you have, you know, that service provided. Everything else is free. Wow. That's, that, that, that is great. That, that is so, so awesome. Um, and I, and I, and I, and I want to say thank you for coming up with this idea because, uh, it's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to change the, 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 the wrestling business, uh, everything. I mean, it, it's, and, and, and like you said, there's, there's other ways on this app to make money versus wrestling, you know, you, so, so, so that, 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 that makes it great as well. Yeah, I know. And, and I agree with that because we have a lot of guys that do ring announcing. They do color commentating. They they will do a rough job if they can't get a job in the ring, like uh, the opportunity to take those bookings. So it not only helps the wrestling stars, but we're on Facebook all the time uh, and we're taking pictures of people like I need a referee in South Carolina with a license. Where's the database to help them out? I need a photographer or a videographer because my videographer dropped out. Where's the database for that? So we're including all of that so that anything that you need for your show will be available in Overdriver. And the, the more we can tell people about this, the more you tell your friends, sign up to the launch list at overdriver.org, 
the the bigger our numbers are going to get. And that means that when we start approaching investors for even bigger toys, bigger tools for you guys, uh, you know, we're going to have numbers, which is what they need to see to know that this isn't a flash in the pan. Good idea. This is something that people are uh, really looking for and committed to using. Yeah, yeah, that that's awesome. So, so, so but but right now you, you don't actually have a, an exact date when when this is going to launch, correct? No, not not an exact date as of yet. We're told eight to ten weeks for the coding phase, and and then we'll we'll be launched. Um, I'm sorry, not weeks. I'm sorry, it's a little late. Months, eight to ten right. months. Right. Yeah. Uh, is the coding and. In the next six weeks, we'll be through the, the first um, big hurdle in the coding phase, and that should bring us closer to, to dialing it in. So we're using this eight to 10 month period to get people aware of Overdriver so that when we do go live, we can have a, a substantial user base from the get go and then grow from there as well. Wow, that's, that's awesome. So I'm excited about it. So fans out there listening, uh, go on overdriver.org uh, and get get registered so that when this uh, great app drops, you can be one of the first ones to enjoy it and and benefit from it. That's right. Anybody that loves the business, whether you work in it as a talent, a promoter, or a wrestling fan, we want everybody to have these great tools and to be able to connect with each other in in a in a new way so hopefully as as kind of mentioned earlier we're we're looking forward to the to the next phase in wrestling evolution and we're hoping that overdriver will be part of that so the age of overdriver is what we're shooting for yeah that, that that's gonna be great and and and, and i guess a lot, a lot of you fans heard at the top of the program before we got started uh the great commercial for uh the huge event coming up in november uh, Wrestlecade. Wrestlecade. Uh, I'm excited for that. So who knows? I mean, you know, this Overdriver could be out and up and running by the time uh, Wrestlecade hits. You never know. Um, but uh, but uh, it, 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 like I said, it can only make things better. Absolutely, and we're we're looking forward to to Wrestlecade as well. We're actually currently in talks to to lock down the logistics to be uh, at Wrestlecade and to represent uh, the app and to talk to people about it there as well. Oh, that that that's awesome! Yeah, uh, I know our, our, our good friend uh, Dalton is going to be at Wrestlecade. I'm going to be at Wrestlecade, uh, and you're going to be there. So I, I'm excited. We, we, you know, we, we, hopefully we all get to hang out together, uh, have, yeah. a, have a good time. Uh, and I know uh, before we did this podcast a few weeks ago, we talked about having uh, some putting some questions together. Uh, and so I, I definitely want I definitely want to bring you back on the podcast so that we can do that and have Dalton here. So so us three can 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 do that. I'm I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that, too. Yeah, for sure. No, I think that'll be uh, an excellent podcast. We'll talk a little bit about you know kind of what's going on in the business and and uh you know uh what you know uh, the past in the business some of the great workers in the past some of the stuff that we see coming up and 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 what do you follow right now yourself tony are you uh following wwe aew both you, well, you um, know, or are you just following the uh, indies well it, it's kind of funny I, I i you know in the 90s 80s 80s 90s uh, well, I, let's let's talk the nineties when I was uh, wrestling every weekend. Um, I was a huge WCW guy. I never was Me much too. on WWE uh, or at the time WWF. Uh, I mean, I would watch it, but um, a few weeks ago, I, I saw some somebody had put a post up on Facebook that said, uh, "1997, the height of the Monday Night Wars." Uh, yeah. what were you doing? Were you, uh, watching one or watching the other one? And, and I responded to that by saying, um, I'm recording one and watching the other one. Um, yeah. what I would do, I would, I would set my, my VCR to, and of course this was the VCR days guys, but I would set my VCR to record, uh, Monday night raw because, WCW Nitro yeah. was full of so many surprises, and I didn't want to miss anything. Um, Same. So I, that's so that's what I would I would record it. But now when the commercial come on, I'd flip over and you know kind of watch a little bit of WWE. But um, it didn't really 
catch my interest the way WCW did. And and I think the reason was a WCW had, you know, like I said, a lot of surprises. You didn't know who was going to show up uh, or anything like that. But in my mind, that was still Jim Crockett. I mean, it, I mean, it wasn't Jim Crockett at the time, but but that's what it involved from. And I was a huge Jim Crockett right. uh, Promotions fan as a little kid. Uh, Jim Crockett Promotions is what sparked my interest and what made me want to be a wrestler. And 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 you know, one of the coolest things that I, I ever got, I got to do uh, as far as being in wrestling. Um, is a lot of people that get in wrestling, they get in wrestling because there was a wrestler in their lifetime that, that made them love it, made them want to be it, made them want to do it. And, and that's kind of for me. So for me as a, as a 10 year old kid, when I looked at my dad one day and I said, you know, dad, one day I'm going to be a pro wrestler. Now at that time I said that I'm thinking, well, you know, a lot of times I said, I want to be Superman and Batman. And I know that probably going to happen. But there was just something, man, about that and when I made that statement that, you know, I felt good about it. I felt like, you know, I am going to be a wrestler one day. Somehow I'm going to figure out how to get in this business. Because back then, uh, it wasn't like it is now. There was no social media. You didn't know, uh, you know, there wasn't 10, 10 different people running shows in the same state or the same town uh, like there is now. But, um, but but I but but it's almost like when I when I made that statement I knew it in my heart that that was going to happen it's a, 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 you know one day, and the the uh, the uh, two wrestlers that really um, made me want to be a wrestler was Jimmy Valiant and the Rock and Roll Express, and I'm a pretty lucky guy because I got to train with Jimmy Valiant he he taught me and and then trained me, um, and then uh, a couple of years ago. I got to wrestle the first time, uh, the Rock and Roll Express, and uh, that that was an emotional night for me. But but it's still fun. But a year uh, last year, I done a show for the NAWA, and and Rick and Robert were on the show, and and we was in the locker room, and they came over and they remembered me, and they were saying Hayes and everything, and I, and I finally got a chance to tell Rick and Robert at the same time. I said, "Listen," I said. You know, you guys are doing your farewell tour, but everybody in this locker room uh, should should come over and shake your hand and give you their payoff because you guys paved the way for so many people to become wrestlers. I said, and I'm going to tell you right now, you know, it, it, it was definitely you guys. I said, you know, my dad brought me to the Greensboro Coliseum. Uh, Rock and Roll King starts playing. You guys come out of the locker room and then you disappear. And I don't see you for 10 minutes. And then once you get through the sea of people, your shirt's ripped off, your bandanas are hanging off of you. And I told my dad, I'm going to do that one day. <laughs> and Robert's like, brother, <laughs> he's like, if I had a dollar for every time somebody's told me that, I, he said, I'd be a millionaire. But he said, I really appreciate that. He said, you don't know how much that means to me and Ricky to know that we had this much, you know, uh, uh, you know to help people impact. impact. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. and, and somebody's life to become a wrestler in. And, and I'm thankful that the, the, the uh, three people that really made me and pushed me to do it, I, I got to thank them. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. No, I, I love that. I think that's terrific. That's awesome. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a great thing. So I'm, I'm excited, man. It's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're excited too. We're, we're really excited to, to just help the business and, and uh, take a lot of technological tools that exist in a lot of other areas and, and bring them home. And that's what it's about is, is kind of just bringing everybody together to, to work for the common good. You know, mm -hmm. I know I had mentioned earlier about, you know, having promoters that don't pay and, and talent that screw over promoters and, and that's that's certainly part of what inspired it. But really, the goal here isn't so much to to identify the negative as it is to bring really excellent talent to talent that need help so that they can learn and grow to bring promoters that are doing an excellent job together with promoters that are trying to get into the business and trying to learn and, and help identify the real positives in the business. Because I believe if we highlight the positives, the negatives will weed themselves out. The positives, we need to build them up for this business to get healthier and to get bigger and to continue to evolve. Yeah. And, and that's awesome, man. I, I'm, I'm excited for that. So, uh, like I said, fans go on there, 
uh, overdriver.org. Get signed up uh, so that once this thing um, launches, you can be part of it. Absolutely. We love to have you guys, and we're glad to have Tony involved and, and to be here you know, talking to you uh, about this is just a real honor, you know, cause you've got, you've got decades in the business, man. And if anybody could tell me I'm, I'm out of my mind, it'd be you. And to have you on my side is just extremely validating and exciting. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I like, like I said, from the moment that, that I, I met you and, and learned and heard about it, I was, I was, I was on board. I was ready, man. Cause I'm like, this, this could really be something. And I even, you know, on the, on the podcast that we were talking about earlier, uh, I even commented. I was like, "Yeah, the overdriver is going to be over because it it really is." I mean, I, I think a lot Thank of you. a lot of wrestlers are going to be excited about this, and uh, it's going to help out a lot of people. So, so I'm I'm excited for it. Yeah, thank you so much, and and stay tuned to the to the website or Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, YouTube. We're going to be making an announcement in the next month or so for uh, a new contest that we're going to hold. We did a hundred dollar gift card, uh, which we ended up turning into a cash gift because I don't care really how you receive it. I just wanted to to give thanks. We did a drawing for the surveys that we took on our website. Uh, coming up soon, we're going to announce uh, what is likely to be a bigger cash prize for referrals. Um, people are referring people as of right now, and we want to do a contest. We'll be announcing again in the next month or so to see who can refer the most fans, talent, promoters to Overdriver's free launch list, and we'll be we'll be doing a, another cash prize. Oh, that's awesome. I can't wait for that. that, that, that that's going to be great. Well, well, Bill, I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the show and talk about Overdriver. Uh, I, like I said, I apologize for taking it this long to, to uh, finally sit down and and uh, weed it out, but but we made it. And like I said, I'm also looking forward to uh, you and I and Dalton getting together uh, and doing our three question podcast. That's going to be awesome too. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be amazing. No, Tony, I appreciate you taking the time to have us and I look forward to, to coming back with uh, Dalton and, and talking about the business and, and going over our questions. I just, I can't thank you enough, man. We appreciate you, man. You're very welcome. Well, fans that that's going to wrap us up this week on the binge buster show. Uh, but make sure that you, uh, again, uh, go on overdriver.org, uh, and, uh, and get registered and then make sure that you, uh, Go uh, like and follow them on all their social medias. And most importantly, make sure if you're not following the Binge Buster Show, do the same thing. Uh, and we will see you and hear you next week here on the Binge Buster Show. Thank you for listening to the Binge Buster Show. Make sure you like us on Facebook and download us on your favorite podcast platform. 